In the Democratic Republic of Congo, three United Nations peacekeepers and at least 12 civilians have been killed in violent anti-UN protests in the eastern part of the country. Let's discuss this further. We have Dr. Felix Ndahinda, a researcher focusing on conflict, peace and justice in the Great Lakes region. For more analysis, of course, on this eastern DR Congo security situation, he is based in Tilburg, Netherlands. He joins us from there via Zoom. Thank you very much, Dr. Ndahinda, for your time. Now, the UN, chief, uh, the UN chief says attacks on any U.S. peacekeepers in the eastern part of the DRC may constitute a war crime. There's been three members of the UN forces that have been killed so far. What is your take on the situation? Um, the situation is getting quite uh, worrisome, of course, and indeed the UN chief is right. What is happening may indeed uh, fall within the, categ the legal category of war crimes. Um, but let's keep in mind that this is a place already where many other war crimes are taking place. Uh, just a few weeks ago, the, the same area was in the news over a spark of hate speech and quite a lot of violence in the town of Goma and a number of other uh, cities uh, with, in relation to hate speech uh, against the, the members of the Kinyarwanda speaking community in that part of the country. But now the focus of the anger connected more or less to that, but also to the wider insecurity is against the, 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 the MONUSCO, which has, is a UN force, of course, which has been under different shapes in the country since, the, 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 let's say, the, the Lusaka, Pretoria Peace Accord of the 90s, end of 90s, early 2000s. And there, is a, there has been quite frequent attacks on the force. And that with the feeling that it's not doing enough with considerable means to protect the population. But what is important, and maybe I will come back to that, much of these tend to be fueled by politicians who use hate speech or conspiracy theories uh, against this force to, let's say, mask their own failures in terms of governance, and it, but also in terms of precisely performing their own initial mandate of protecting citizens. After all, the, the UN force should be the default force when the authorities are not doing their own job. And why do you think there's a lot of anger of locals towards these UN troops in that region, especially in the DRC? And what are the implications? Um, I, I look at this in two ways. There, there are the responsibilities that fall on MONUSCO itself. But also there are really, this needs to be read against the, 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 the whole climate of security and violence, but also Congo, broken Congolese politics. And I will start with the, first, the, the last. Uh, Congo has been a, a country with, with quite uh, broken politics at the level of Kinshasa. We know the, the, the questionment of, uh, of the legitimacy of the current government and the way it was brokered with the, the deal between Kabila and the current president. But also we know that they are running into elections that are planned for next year. And in that kind of climate, the populist game has always been activated to always find what scapegoats should there be for, for, for the woes that the country is, is going through. So in this case, it's the MONUSCO, but most of the time it has been the, the Rwanda, Uganda, the international community. As, I mean, this particular protest was more or less sparked by a speech made by uh, the current uh, president of the Congolese Senate, who is from the South Kivu region, in both Goma and Bukavu, where basically he asked for MONUSCO to leave, and people followed and went into the streets. Uh, and most of the time, this, is, this populist kind of uh, language is activated around elections somehow to find always a culprit for, 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 for the wars that the country goes and to mask the responsibilities of the authorities in on, not, not performing their own functions. Uh, so th th that's one. And it, there is always this prevailing figure. I, I just published a paper on hate speech and, 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 and conspiracy theories in, in Eastern DRC. Most of the time you have always this prevailing feeling that the, 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 what goes on wrong in the Congo is res the responsibility of others. It's the, re the, the regional neighbors, it's an international community which is conspiring against the country as a way of exploiting its minerals. What the locals have as a responsibility in fixing the wrongs of their own countries tend always to be masked by this kind of language. And the second level then, of course, it has to do with the MONUSCO itself. The UN intervention in the country, of course, still is very necessary to my mind. There are many lives which have been saved by waves of violence. Keep in mind that this is an area which hosts more than 100 
different armed groups. Uh, there is a fixation of M23, and there is a right need to, to ask questions around that. But we have more than 100 plus armed groups which are involved in quite illicit activities, including violence against civilians. So uh, this is an area where really you need security, and MONUSCO has played and still continues to play quite a role in, 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 in protecting these people. That being said, there have been tons of, uh, of research and, 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 and uh, critical research that ha has also criticized the way MONUSCO operates or the U UN broad kind of mandate operates there. There is always this savior mentality where interveners act very, with very limited uh, collaboration with local authorities, contained within the force itself, limited number of locals in impactful positions.